COVID cases continue to surge in the U.S. as we enter the thick of the holiday season. And now dealing with a new Greek letter, Omicron, we want to get the legislative perspective with Representative Ed Perlmutter of Colorado. Representative, thanks for joining us here today. And as we were discussing in the break, I actually have some family members in your district, so I'm really keen to hear your, your views on this. In New York here, we just got uh, not a mask mandate, but a strongly worded letter from the mayor's office that they are reinstituting a, a mask recommendation, recommending that everybody, regardless of vaccination status, wear these indoors. This is a densely populated urban area, but I'm just wondering what your constituents are coming to you about with this latest, latest Omicron development. The Delta variant. So in some of the urban and suburban counties, we do have a mask mandate. It, we were very well sort of uh, protected, it seemed like, over the course of the summer and the early fall. But this November, just like last November, we've had a surge. And now we've got this uh, Omicron that, you know, I guess was located in South Africa. And listening to some of your earlier, um, you know, panelists, we're not quite sure how transmissible it is or how dangerous, how virulent it is. Uh, I serve on the science committee. And uh, about three, four months ago, we had a hearing. In fact, we had a professor from South Africa as one of our witnesses, because South Africa has had a number of different variants of concern. And so, I mean, clearly the market uh, was shocked by it on Friday, uh, seems to have evened out a little bit today, but we just don't know very much about this. It may be more transmissible, but ten potentially might not be as dangerous as some of the other variants. Yeah, and that seems to be the real concern, the uncertainty around all of this, at least uh, from an investor perspective. Uh, you've obviously got uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and Fed Chair Powell testifying before your House Financial Services Committee on Wednesday at a time when there's a bit of a mixed picture in the economic recovery. Uh, last week, we saw uh, jobless claims or weekly jobless claims fall to a new low, and yet we're continuing to see cost pressures build up. What are some key questions you have uh, for that hearing as you try to get a better handle on where we are in this economic recovery? I think my key questions are those that you've been asking some of your uh, uh, prior speakers. Uh, one, uh, how long lived and how sharp do we think inflation will be over the course of the next three, six, nine, 12 months? And what kind of concerns will they have because of this new variant of concern, the, the Omicron uh, virus? And so there's a lot of uncertainty, which uh, markets never really like uh, out there. I mean, we've seen inflation in some areas here in Colorado, but we've seen decreases in pricing on, uh, in other things. The, the virus has really disrupted uh, across the board, whether it's the supply chain or labor supply. And so it's, we're gonna have some oscillations in the economy over the course of the next uh, year or two, because the thing has been so big, so worldwide and so disruptive. And on the legislative front, I just wanted to get an update on the Build Back Better plan, obviously left the House and the Senate now, but wondering if there's any communication or uh, back channeled or otherwise that you could tell us about and maybe any other uh, legislative affairs that you're dealing with now. Sure, thanks, Jared. Um, the Build Back Better passed the House uh, right before Thanksgiving. We were very happy to do that because Build Back Better is really investing in people. Uh, it's investing in housing, it's investing in education, you know, whether it's Pell Grants or apprenticeships, it's investing in healthcare. And obviously with this virus still circulating the way it is, I mean, healthcare is front and center for everybody. It also has a lot of science uh, in it to kind of rebuild and reinvest in our space programs, NASA, in our National Renewable Energy Lab, so in the energy labs. And so there is a lot in Build Back Better. Uh, we expect, you know, uh, that the Senate will uh, make some changes to it and it will come back to the House. But in any event, it will be a substantial investment in people as we are making substantial investment in hard assets, roads and bridges, 
uh, waterworks, uh, electrical grid, broadband, which was what was in the infrastructure. And this is going to help America, uh, the quality of life for Americans, but also keep us competitive with the rest of the world for the next 50 years. Uh, with that said, Congress has a lot on its plate come December. You've got that deadline approaching in December to fund the government, raise the debt ceiling. Um, to what extent do you think negotiations over that could slow down the passage of Build Back Better? And what kind of timeline are you looking at? Uh, Akiko, that is the $64 question, I would say. Uh, we do have, at the end of this week on Friday, deadlines concerning funding the government and uh, raising the debt ceiling. Uh, my guess is their part and parcel of all the conversations uh, concerning Build Back Better going on in the Senate right now. And so I see all of these things coming together. It's, it's uh, could be very complicated and uh, uh, difficult, but I think all of these things will come together and move forward uh, together. So we may have to continue for a short period of time, the funding of the government, maybe the debt ceiling, but there are a lot of pieces coming together. I think we're gonna work them out just as we have so far on the infrastructure bill in the rescue plan that is still available to us uh, to deal with things like uh, this new variant, this Omicron uh, variant. There still is a lot of funding for states and for healthcare to deal with uh, this virus and the different mutations it takes on. So, this month is going to be very busy. The National Defense Authorization Act is also up uh, for a vote in the Senate. Uh, Jared, you asked, what do we have? I have, I had an amendment to that uh, involving safe banking, which was to provide a safe harbor for financial uh, service businesses, banks and credit unions that provide financial services to the marijuana uh, cannabis industry. So we'll see exactly how that goes, but that's another must pass bill that we expect to take up in December. Yeah, and certainly something, Congressman, uh, that you have really been focused on, but I wanna get back to build better specifically on the timeline. How confident are you that you can get a vote? I mean, you're in the House, but the Senate can vote. And how likely do you think, if in fact it does pass the Senate in some form, I mean, are we talking about potential signing in December or, or you think it's just inevitable given everything that's on your plate that this gets pushed to next year? Well, Akiko, you know I'm the eternal optimist. Um, I feel that there have been a lot of negotiations uh, that have gone on to this point. And so there's not a lot of new information. I think people are keeping an eye on inflationary trends uh, but there's not a lot of new information that needs to be gained. And so I, th I have confidence so uh, something's going to happen uh, in December on Build Back Better. And then it'll come back to the House and hopefully we will then forward it to the president uh, for his signature. But I, uh, you know, there have been a lot of uh, ups and downs uh, with the negotiation around infrastructure, which is now done. And and signed by the president. There've been ups and downs with Build Back Better. I think we'll probably still have a few ups and downs, but I really am optimistic we'll get it done by Christmas. And before we let you go, I wanna come back to that Safe Banking Act that would provide uh, federal relief for banks to be able to accept cannabis companies and process their payments uh, legally. And I'm just wondering, because there was a lot of enthusiasm when you introduced this, I believe it was a week, two weeks ago, this latest introduction of it, uh, then that faded. And a lot of Wall Street analysts saying that's not gonna happen during Biden's first uh, term here. That seems a long way out. Uh, what are the hangups here? Is it simply, uh, the the Senate or is there more at play? It's uh, the Senate um, and I'll, you know, we've now passed uh, the Safe Banking Act with big bipartisan support out of the House. Uh, two and a half years ago, uh, when uh, Senator Crapo headed up the banking committee under the Republicans in the Senate, we passed a big bipartisan uh, bill to them and then uh, sat there for two years. Now Democrats are in charge we sent a big bill, bipartisan vote uh, to the Senate back in March. Sherrod Brown is the head of the banking committee. It's been sitting there. Uh, that's why we added uh, safe banking to the National Defense Authorization Act. There's a part of it dealing with cartels and foreign money laundering, uh, that kind of stuff. So it's germane to that bill. And we hope 
that it will stay on there. But we've had resistance from Senator Schumer, Senator Booker, and they would like to have a much bigger piece of legislation that uh, you know decriminalizes, deschedules, taxes, has criminal justice reform. And I support all of that, but I don't think they have the votes for that. And I'm pretty sure the votes in the Senate are there for safe banking. In fact, we just had five senators uh, from the Armed Services Committee in the Senate. Uh, Senator Kelly, King, uh, Peters, uh, Rosen, and Kramer, uh, Democrats and Republicans, asking the Senate Armed Services Committee to keep safe banking uh, in the National Defense Authorization Bill. So I think there's still a good chance for, uh, for us getting that passed. Well, Congressman, I know, I know you've been at, working at this for a, a long time, so really appreciate you always keeping us in the loop here. Congressman Ed Perlmutter of Colorado, great to have you on today. Really appreciate the time.